Ben Kat Pillay, a founder and CEO with Lat Connect 60. It's great to be here in Malaysia and welcome to Australia in Space TV. Thank you, Chris. Nice to have you here and nice to have you visiting us. Uh, we're in the offices of Lat Connect 60. Uh, there are a couple of reasons why. One, we've, we've met last year uh, in, in Malaysia and I went off and I interviewed the Malaysian uh, Director General of the Malaysian Space Agency. Yes. So it's great to be back here in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. But also, we know Lat Connect 60 in Western Australia, and we had you at the Indo Pacific Space and Earth Conference. And we're welcoming you this year uh, as a key sponsor for the Indo Pacific Mm. Space and Earth Conference in Perth, 26th of November, with a three day exhibition alongside the Asia Pacific Space uh, Space Agency Forum. Mm. Um, Look, thank you so much. I think we can dive into Lat Connect 60. You've got a satellite launch scheduled for 2026. That's right, yes. uh, With a range of other things, and as uh, we might show a little bit around uh, the offices, you've got uh, a full office here with uh, physicists and uh, analysts and the like. So it's a fascinating business. Yes. Uh, are you still technically a startup, would you say, or? Um, I think a fast growing scale up, okay, I'd like okay, to say. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit outside of the startup mode, but still like to be scruffy and getting down and getting things <laughs> right. done as a startup. Wonderful. Well, maybe yeah. introduce us to that Connect 60 and what you're doing, but you're definitely doing some interesting things here in Malaysia yes. uh, and expanding. So yeah, how would yeah. you describe uh, your business? Yeah, so Lat Connect 60 is a Perth Western Australian uh, headquartered and based business, but we've got a large uh, operational presence in Malaysia because you know, from day one when we set up Lat Connect, we looked at being an Australian company that's exporting and exporting insights in the satellite domain to markets across uh, Southeast Asia and the wider Asia Pacific region. You know, my background has been in the space industry for close to eighteen years. Right. I used to work with uh, larger Earth observation companies in North America, uh, like MDA, Maxa. You might have heard of these yes. companies, um, and and very much built my career prior to Lat Connect sixty in the satellite earth observation domain and what I saw was a key gap in the Australian Southeast Asian market for insights generated from earth observation data and making that that those insights more accessible to the wider markets in agriculture and resources and and understanding that there's a growing new space trend where there's a lot more low earth orbit satellites coming into orbit and um, end users are trying to make sense of all this so that's how Let Connect came into being uh, today we're about 35 people strong, Great. Um, again very much present in Western Australia where we have the base of our operations and management, but we also um, have a team in Malaysia that focus, as you mentioned earlier, on you know where we've got physicists, data scientists, software developers, so we feel that there's a good mix of uh, Australian and Southeast Asian or Malaysian capacity that we're building. Yep. We're, we're building our upst- what I call the upstream of our business, which is satellites, getting that into space out of Australia, uh, which is really about creating jobs in that very highly skilled domain of uh, satellite capability in orbit. But we're also then building a downstream capability around analytics and insights in Malaysia, and that's where we're, we're, we're focused on growing that into the Great. agricultural Well, the, the advantage is obviously there's always a strong tie between Malaysia and Australia, and same yes. time zone, yes. uh, KL and, and Perth and, as well. Yes. Uh, how, when did you start the business? I think where you obviously you saw these opportunities, but was space getting cheaper? You felt that uh, you wanted to connect the data to the end user, but mm. what was the trigger for you to go, okay, we can actually do this now. Mm. It's, uh, it's cheap enough to launch. Uh, or the skill skill sets are there now that we can start to do that, or things like applications uh, and and that technology that came through. Mm. Yeah, no, that's a great question. I mean, we started the business in 2019, so it's about five years plus now yeah. since we've we've been running. Um, and one of the key drivers for that, which um, Ruben and I, my my co-founder and I, felt was that uh, yes, access to space was uh, coming down. Obviously, SpaceX, everyone knows about them. Yeah. Uh, making launches a lot more affordable and other players in the in the market as well uh, out of India and so on uh, making launch and, and, and low earth orbit satellites more affordable to launch up so that had a ripple effect in the industry where uh, earth observation raw data from satellites were getting cheaper to, to access but the gap still remained that whilst you could buy that data theoretically from uh, constellations that are out there, how do you make sense of it? And and how do end users get their hands on it? Uh, so that was one key trend that, that made us think, okay, now's a good time to come in. Yeah. Uh, the other was looking at Australia's willingness to stand up the Australian Space Agency, to have an Earth observation roadmap. Obviously, I think Australia as a com- uh, country is very 
uh, strong in that domain. Uh, we've had a lot of legacy capability that's being built upon that uh, Lab Connect felt that by standing up in Australia, our business, we could take advantage of that key expertise around the usage of the data yeah. and then just making that more commercially av uh, available within Australia and then the region. So it's a combination of uh, the access to space element and also the expertise that we could draw on from Australia that could then lend itself well into the regional nice. markets. Yeah. And what's your roadmap now? You've got a satellite being launched in India in 2026. Yes. Uh, SWIR, the infrared. Yes, yeah, a shortwave infrared, short infrared satellite. Infrared, yeah. yeah, but is there uh, optical to that as well? There's some optics. Yeah, yeah well, shortwave yeah. infrared data is uh, an optical uh, yeah. imagery data set. It's yeah. just the spectrum in which we're imaging in is in the IR infrared range, where we we look at uh, data in the sort of thousand nanometers to thousand eight hundred nanometer wavelength. I'm getting a bit technical here, no, no, but no. the reason why we focus on that range is. Uh, and, and to explain the nuance a bit, uh, your traditional Earth observation satellites uh, image in the multispectral domain. Yes. So the, the nice pretty pictures you see on Google Earth, if you go to satellite view, that's multispectral images. Those are you know images that you capture in the spectral range of about 450 nanometers to roughly 900 nanometers. We're looking a bit beyond that. Uh, why we're focusing on that is we felt that there was a key gap for the type of data and insights that we could glean from that range, particularly when we're looking at carbon emissions or soil moisture or, or vegetation moisture. So this is picking up methane and that Yeah, methane, thing, yeah. which is a key focus for us now, especially looking at industry yeah. trends, uh, the resources sectors are uh, increasingly focused on net zero carbon and, and meeting the net zero carbon pledges and targets. And when we looked at the, the, the capabilities that are available in orbit, we found a tremendous gap in higher resolution data for methane monitoring. Sure, there's some satellites available in the yeah. market today, but they're very broad. They're just giving you general trends across uh, areas of interest, uh, regions. But if you're really looking at being serious about your net zero carbon targets and, and looking to reduce, you need asset level monitoring Got it. from space. And that's what we're trying to do. But it requires uh, a data set in a specific range and a specific high enough resolution that you can pick up those sources. And you're at a 1.5 meter resolution? Yeah, that's right, yeah, 1.5 okay. meters. So pretty well leading in terms of what we're doing in right. yeah. And how much coverage are you getting? What uh, orbit is that on and, and what areas are you covering? Yeah, so look, we're, we're focusing on multiple orbits. Um, the first satellite that, that we've announced will go into a mid-inclined orbit. So what that means is we're foregoing coverage over the poles but instead having a lot more coverage over most areas of the populated world where we, we think emissions are, are, are originating from. Yep. Um, but further satellites will have the ability to uh, fly over the pools and give us a more global coverage. Right. Yes. And I understand you're in business for this already, right? So you yes. are pre-selling access yes. to this data? Yes. How? Maybe talk us through the process. How much of a challenge is that to say, mm -hmm. In two years' time, we're going to have a satellite up there. Do you want to, to access that and uh, and sort of yeah the business model around it? Yeah, so that's a really spot on question. Like, see, if you went to a client today, <laughs> yes. like an oil major, and you said uh, we've got a satellite launching in two years, they say come back and talk to us in two Correct, years. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so the way we we broke what we, what I call the chicken and egg cycle, uh, where we just not get a second meeting, uh, is to actually use representative data sets from the third party satellites that have close enough data sets to what we're looking to, to yep. achieve in orbit. And then through an, um, the, the AI algorithms that we built, the process, post-processing techniques that we built, simulate what they are likely to see from the satellite and also demonstrate that based on the low resolution data that's available today, we can already pick up source level emissions, right. which yep. actually has enabled us to sign up three oil majors today already. Wonderful. Off the back of the lower resolution data that no one else has been able to process to this level. And then we've now said, look, once we get high resolution data, this will only get better. Yeah. You know. Well, that, I think that's the key point, right? <coughs> yes. You're obviously going to feed that. If yes. you've got these feeds already, yes. you're only going to make that, that better. Yes. Are they discovering new things out of this? Or is it just a bit more of efficient and more insights into what they've got? Or is it relatively new? You, you talked about oil majors. So is mm. this something new for them? Yeah. Or are you uncovering new science for them? It, it's fairly new in that, uh, you know, they've been obviously fascinated for satellite-based uh, detection of methane. Yeah. Uh, the, the common perception is that it, it 
it's not likely to work because satellites are so far away. How can I ensure that the accuracy of the data uh, is aligned with what I'm getting from my flow meters and so on? But there are limitations to, you know, just spraying flow meters all around your 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 site. You know, it's very cost prohibitive. You're not going to get uh, the accurate measurements once the your plumes come out of your your plume stack. You know, right. if I'm talking yep. about an oil rig. So what we're doing is actually a combined approach where we're combining what we're detecting from satellite with the flow meters, with drone data sets, and cross-calibrating that data. And it should yes. verify each other, exactly, right? Exactly, yes. exactly. And so we've actually been able to prove to one client um, an accuracy of 95%, Wow! which uh, they were blown away. So initially when, when they looked at it, they were skeptical that we could even hit 50%, because yeah. when they've looked at other satellite-based platforms, uh, at a very cursory level, it was you know maybe thirty percent or less. Yeah. Are they getting um, operational getting, use out of that as well? I think uh, uh, again, my first thought would be things like preventative maintenance and yes. those kind of things. Yes. Yeah. So I I use the, the the defense and intelligence term only because I come from that sector yes. previously of tip and queue. So essentially, what the satellite does is it tips the operator to then queue uh, a different form of monitoring tool whether it be a ground-based uh, LDAR measurement that's uh, you know sort of ground-based sensors or fly a drone or do an aerial survey. So I like to look at satellites as being your early, early warning system for oil and gas yes, companies very good. to start detecting this at an asset level. And that also flips the, com uh, the company itself. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first heard of LAT Connect 60, you were predominantly in agriculture and helping yes. farmers have 300 mm -hmm. Farm at least three hundred. It might be the number well, of three hundred thousand or something. Yeah, like it's, that it's actually one hundred and twenty-five thousand. There you today. go. I knew it was a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so one third of Malaysia's uh, small a small rice farming community are using our insights today, and and that's uh, actually in 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 a lot uh, in part to our work that we've done with the National Rice and Grain Agency in yes. Malaysia. So they're a, a, a very good anchor client of ours. In fact, we're looking to extend that partnership and, and obviously uh, at IPSEC and APR staff this year we're looking to talk a lot more about that with the re regional space chiefs in Southeast Asia being attending APR staff we're hoping to expand on what we're right. doing into the broader Southeast Asian market. Well that's a great segue by yeah. the way uh, in terms of uh, APR staff the Asia Pacific Regional yeah. Space Agency Forum yes, uh, and then IPSEC the Indo-Pacific Space and Earth for, uh, Conference what is the focus for you and maybe what brought you on this year? Uh, potentially, it's hard to say without some announcements, but this is a, an official pre-interview, sorry, pre-IPSEC interview yes. that we've been doing as well. Yes. But yeah, what will be your focus for IPSEC uh, this year? Mm. Now look, we've always been uh, keen to participate in IPSEC. I'll, I'll say that it's it's a great conference. It brings a lot of diverse stakeholders to the table, I'd say, over the course of the event. But I think what's exciting this year is that it's it's uh, sort of co-conducted with the uh, Asia Pacific Regional Space Forum, yeah. and it's being held in Perth. And obviously the fact that we're a Perth Western Australian company, uh, and we were being uh, very much supported by the Department of uh, Jobs, uh, Tourism, Science and Innovation, JITSI, uh, yeah. Western Australia, uh, who are a key um, supporter of these events. Yeah. Uh, we felt that it, was only, uh, it only made sense for us to have a very active involvement this year. Um, also, I, you know, from, from our point of view, we are at a stage in our business now where we've got a lot going on. Uh, and it's, sometimes it's hard for everyone to keep track of where LC60 is at, uh, Let Connect 60 is at. I mean, uh, we're doing analytics and now we're launching a satellite. How does this all fit together? <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, uh, you know, and, and so we want to try and tell that story again and now explain that we do have a combination of satellites and insights and, and why is that important and how does that link into the markets that we're serving in agriculture and resources. So we're really looking forward to taking advantage of this uh, forum, if you like, yeah. uh, to make some key announcements about what we're currently doing, uh, some of the partnerships that we're working on for, uh, to develop uh, commercially in the future, and perhaps some exciting announcements on where we're going with our constellation. Wonderful. Yes. That's also an opportunity to meet yeah. with clients, uh, and prospective clients. It's yes. hard enough, as, mm. as we were just talking about, in terms of going around pre-selling yes. uh, data. Yes. I think the other one is we have an Indian delegation mm. and you're launching with India in 2026. So we've got mm. CIA India as our knowledge partner. Yes. So there is that natural connection there. Uh, and hopefully we'll have uh, agencies like the Malaysian Space Agency in Perth at the time as well. And you can be flying both the West Australian flag and the Malaysian flag mm. uh, as well. So I, I, that's a great uh, sort of a uh, call to action, I suppose I was going to say. But do you have any other call to action from a 
from those clients that are potentially looking at this uh, video. Uh, where can they find out more and what have you got there for them? What, what should they do if they want to reach out to you uh, and otherwise a call to action? Yeah, perfect. So, I mean, in terms of reaching out, um, our website, uh, we have a form on our website where you can keep in touch with us. www.latconnect60.com or you can go to our LinkedIn page uh, and search LatConnect60. Right. You can write to us directly. Um, but really the call to action is reach out, have a conversation. I mean, we are in the um, agriculture and resources sectors very actively. Uh, we'd like to have a conversation around uh, your pain points, particularly around net zero carbon monitoring and how uh, the use of space data could, could help you in achieving those targets. Um, I'd also say that, you know, more broadly, uh, what we're developing in terms of satellites and analytics are very customizable. So uh, one thing we've learned in this industry is there's no one shoe fits all. Yep. Uh, so reach out, have a chat, love to Well, I imagine there's you. interest in partners as well. Yes. There's, uh, as you say, there's a multidisciplinary approach here, yes. different technologies. Yes. So different partners uh, and the like. And what we've seen in the background is MOUs being signed yes. as well. Yes. Hopefully we'll have uh, some news around that for IPSEC in Perth uh, in November. Yes, very much so. In fact, we're, we're looking forward to announcing a combination of government and commercial partners that are taking a step forward beyond actually MOUs and we can, we can definitely talk uh, and present that uh, at the conference. Well, Vincat Pele, the founder and CEO, co-founder, I know Ruben's in Perth yes, as well, yes. uh, but thank you very much. This is a, a pre-speaker and sponsor interview for IPSEC 2024. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in Malaysia and take the opportunity to visit the office, but thank you very much for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Thank you so much, Chris.